All right, and hey there, folks, and it is Brian with Box Fire Armor again. And today we are going to be going over basically some tips and tricks here when you're looking at purchasing land. And this has been something that's been brought up on the channel numerous times from people in the comments and a few people who have DM'd me recently asking for me to kind of go over what I personally look for in land and some things that might help them in their search when they're looking for land. So today we're going to go over that. We're going to go over basically how to kind of search for land, a website you can use to search for land, <clears throat> and some just overall things to keep in mind when you are looking at purchasing land, whether that's for bugging out, camping, hunting, fishing, whatever you plan on doing on there. So before we get into that today, I have two things I want to go over. And the first is going to be Jace Case has just announced that they will be offering the Jace Case for children 12 years and up. So that means if you have a family of four and you have two children who are 12 and 13, 12, 14, whatever, you can now have up to four Jace Cases in your house. That means one for you, one for your significant other, and one for both children. So that's a pretty big new development. Just wanted to throw that out there. And as always, the link in the description will take you over there and get you sorted uh, if you're looking into purchasing a Jace case. And for those of you who have never heard of the Jace case, I will put the video up here somewhere. And it is essentially a stockpile of antibiotics for emergency use. So now that that's out of the way, the second thing I wanted to do is shout out to Angry Prepper because I was just at the grocery store and I decided to pick up his favorite, Spam. I uh, had to do it. Uh, but for real though, uh, the shelves near me were relatively bare again. The frozen food section has just been decimated consistently and it it really was bad when i was there the other thing is the pasta sauce is fairly plentiful but the pasta was mostly gone there was very few boxes left on the shelf and this kind of seems to be the trend especially near me is one product will come in stock then the other ones are completely gone the one thing that has remained very consistent is the fact that frozen food has been just getting fewer and fewer items on the shelf restocked. So keep that in mind when you're out there shopping. Also, it ended up costing me $268 for a single cart of groceries, which was essentially just the standard groceries I usually buy for a one and a half to two week period for myself and my family. So prices have gone up again. And I, I don't foresee that getting better anytime soon. So bear in mind, keep that in mind when you guys are out there shopping. And without further ado, we'll get into the content. So I have pulled up Landwatch, which is probably my favorite website when looking for land. There's quite a few on there, but I think Landwatch probably does this stuff the best. I mean, just as someone who works in web development, I feel like this website just does what I need, does it well. So I've pulled up three properties here and we will go into those. Uh, let me close that one. I have three properties that I've pulled up and we'll go through those one by one because they each kind of offer something unique as far as the listings are concerned. But let me just go through the site real quick for you. And what's really nice here is you can basically, if you have a city, county, or just a state, you can immediately search it here. Or what I really find interesting about this website is I can come in here and it gives me a map. And let's just say I want to buy some land in Wyoming. I would love to, to live in Wyoming, but if I was moving there, I'd want a big pasture, lots of acres, basically a farm already set up. And I definitely don't have the millions of dollars that are necessary to do that. But once we get in here, you'll already see that the listings are coming in. And you have the regions, which now you have a little mini map here uh, where you can pick your regions. And counties, if you know the county, 
So in my case, I don't really know counties and cities and stuff in Wyoming outside of, say, like Jackson Hole and Cody and a few of the other big uh, cities out there in Wyoming. But I do know a price target that I would be looking at. And realistically, right now, the properties that I'm currently looking for are going to be in the 50 to 100 range. And we'll come back down here and they're going to be in the 11 to 50 range. Now, you can put a custom range in once you have that set. So for me, it would be a minimum of 20 acres and I would be looking for realistically up to 80 acres and we will add that in there. And now we have our Wyoming, we have our 50,000 to 100,000 and our 20 to 80 acres. And as you'll see, it brings up a list of a bunch of properties that are available that fit that demographic that I'm looking at. Now, you can get a little more in depth and they have things like, do you want undeveloped land? Do you want recreational hunting, horse, waterfront, that kind of stuff? For me, I just like to kind of start at the basics and kind of see what they have and just get a general idea of what is available before I start getting down into the nitty gritty. So this... I mean, it's your basic kind of listing. If you were looking for homes, whatever, it's just this is all going to be geared towards land, whether it's hunting land, bug out land, whatever you're looking for. So this looks interesting. So let's go ahead and we'll give it a click. And when you get in here, you'll see it gives you a breakdown, gives you a way to contact. If you log in, you can save, you can share it with people. So if you have people in a mag that are looking for land and near you, you can actually go on here and look for that kind of stuff and then send it out to them. So here you go. You'll get a nice, really good breakdown. Um, this one, this one's actually really good. So it's got the tax code and everything in there. So that is really good to know because certain land might be filed under a tax program that benefits uh, land conservation. So keep that in mind when you're looking out there. If you do find a property that says like uh, this many acres is conservation and this many acres is what you can actually do stuff with, uh, you'll have to decide if not being able to do anything with that other acreage is worth the benefits that you get, and you may need to pass on that property. So you'll get, this is a very long, and I'm not going to read all this stuff, but you'll kind of see, they'll give you an overview. They'll tell you, you know, what you can do on there, what it's zoned as. Um, this one's got a whole bunch of things of like where you're, how close you are to things, uh, Obviously, the way this is zoned, property taxes are super cheap, which is very awesome if you're looking for land. Now, the other thing that you'll want to look at, which is usually down here at the end, and I'll show you another way to get to this, but I love to look at the overhead map view. And the main reason for that is going to be, me personally, I am looking for something that usually has some sort of tree coverage or timber available on the property. So we'll click into the gallery and you'll see you have your gallery, property map, and a local map. And the first thing that I like to do is I like to come into the property map because this gives me a nice giant blown up overview. And you'll notice there really isn't a lot of tree coverage here. Now, Wyoming, for many of you who know, it's like more plains than it is mountains unless you get to the uh, Montana side or very much into the Jackson Hole side uh, by Yellowstone and, and the mountains over there. So... Property map view is great. You can kind of see where the property lines are. And I will show you later on, not all are going to have this. And I'm kind of bummed when I, when I don't get that, but it, it's very nice to have. So I come here, I'll kind of look at this and see whether it's landlocked. And I'll go over that here in a minute for those who don't know what landlocked means. And then you can kind of come in here and click on the gallery. And some of these will actually have videos, which is very cool. And... Actually, they did some kind of interesting stuff there. So you'll see you have some nice views. It's very much open here. Uh, you have access roads to actually be able to access the property, which is nice. And yeah, I mean, you can kind of go through here. They don't really have a ton of photos on this one, but there you go. That's that's what you get. And that's basically the, the bare bones of how to search for some land and get started. So the first one I will pull up here is a property here in Wisconsin, and it is in Jackson County. 
for those who actually know Wisconsin. And you'll notice property map, right? This is only 17 acres, but these are basically just for you guys to show. Now, the one thing that's hard to tell from this particular map here is if this property is landlocked. And you'll notice kind of right here, we have a road and a road. I'm gonna guess that this property is easement access, which means that there are other homes and other property owners who have access roads that have been carved out to give access to their properties and other properties that they might lease out or might have sold off. And I'm gonna assume that that's what this is here just by seeing these roads down here. So then we'll come in and this is why I love to look at the photos. Really before I do anything else, before I really read about the property, look at the property map and look at the photos because if it doesn't have what I'm looking for, then there's really no point in me moving any further on it. And right off the bat, this property looks awesome. It's got a creek running through it. It looks like it's got some nice timbers here. Uh, we got some spruces it looks in there, pine. Um, I'm assuming there's probably some other hardwood. You'll notice here they've taken some photos. It looks like there's some beaver activity, uh, which would make sense with the creek or river that's running through there. And that actually looked like deer scrapes. So it looks like they do have some, some good wildlife probably on the property, which in the scenario for preparedness and bugging out, this is the kind of stuff that you would want to look for because the abundance of natural resources and uh, wildlife on the property is going to be an absolute necessity when talking about long-term sustainability on that property. So you'll notice it's got some carve-outs. Looks like they carved some trails out. Got some property line markers. That's kind of interesting. It looks like it could have been a beaver. So yeah, you can kind of just go through the photos here. And this one obviously has 26. And I'm assuming this is probably an, another beaver. Um, but yeah, you got some nice hardwoods there. And they got a water source, which means you're going to get animals that go to the water source. And this is what I was talking about when I was talking about landlocked. And... I wish I could point onto the screen and you guys could see where I'm pointing here, but unfortunately I can only do the best I can do here with the mouse. And that is, you'll notice there's a giant parcel of what it looks to be farmland here and homes, definitely farm all over here. And they have this little line drawn. Now, this could be an access road or it could be a trail that's carved out for things like ATVs and snowmobiles. And you may not be able to get a vehicle back there, but you might have some sort of pad, parking pad right in that general vicinity. And so they'll continue to give you kind of the views to kind of see where you're at. You can kind of see from the overhead, it's got very good tree coverage, which for me, this would be something that I'd be looking for. And yeah, so from there, all you got to do to get out of the gallery view here, just hit the X, you come back in here and basically then if you wanted to, so it looks like, yeah, it's a class two trout stream, um, hour from La Crosse, three hours from Milwaukee, two from Minneapolis, four from Chicago. And yeah, that's... That's about it. Yeah, it doesn't really give you too much more outside of that. So you would probably, this would be one that I would definitely keep an eye out for the non-easement access and it being kind of a landlocked property. Now, in a bug out situation, this is definitely not an issue. If you're purely looking for hunting, fishing, and just being outdoors, this would be totally fine because you could have a parking pad and either hike your way in, be a long hike, or realistically, you would have an ATV that you would bring with you and you would... ATV into the property. So from there, we'll look at one here in Montana. And you'll notice this one has a very good variation of kind of like open area and wooded area. And this one, you can definitely tell 100% this is going to be easement access. And so here's your two homes that have the dirt road going to them. This might be a, another home. I can't really tell. 
But this road right here is going to be your easement access to your property. So this is going to be your area right here. That's this kind of corner of your property that is going to be your easement access. So you would want some sort of parking pad or parking structure on your property. And you would kind of dig that easement in and you would have your easement access through these other properties right there. Now, that could be a good thing for you. could be a bad thing for you. You really have to kind of just decide what your what your end game is and what your goal is realistically for the property, because this could be a good thing for you. You could have these neighbors who are basically a, a forewarning of someone coming onto your property, right? If you guys set up a good line of communication, your neighbors could become part of your mag or become your mag in this case, right? So we'll go to the gallery here and you'll notice that this is a more mountainous region. And so we have some kind of like nice plateaus up here. This would probably be great camping up there. And hillsided woods. And this would be your road coming in, which is I, I was talking about, right? So dirt road access, easement access through these people's property. And yeah, I mean, looks like a solid property. Nice wooded. You'll see some downed timber there which obviously you would want to clear out and you could use for building whatever else. These kind of topographical maps are going to be really good also because you kind of can see the high and low spots and you'll notice you are kind of on a higher spot in this instance. So you wouldn't have to worry too much about pooling, um, flooding, that kind of stuff. And yeah, really nice looking property here. May not be the best if uh, you're looking for something that is you know, to build a, a large home on possibly, you'd really have to go and check it out because photos only can show you a part of the picture. But this is very cool. You got the uh, Missouri River here and obviously people are kayaking and fishing and going out on those. So, yeah. So that's it. There's your easement road, dirt road. So you'd want to make sure obviously that you have a four-wheel drive vehicle to be able to, on muddy rainy wet days be actually be able to get to your property and then again like i said come out here and it will give you kind of the uh overview of everything here and obviously this one is going to have the this aspect to it for sure deer elk mountain lion bear pretty much everything you could ever want to hunt i'm sure there's grouse out there so if you're a hunter this could be an amazing property for you uh, if, if that's all you're looking for. And who knows, in the future, if you had to bug out to this location, it could be a great location to bug out to also. And then the last one I have here is... Basically, it's, it's kind of a hybrid. Uh, so it has partial easement access and it has partial landlock. And you'll notice here, so this one actually doesn't have... We'll come over here real quick to show you. Sometimes this happens. They don't ever do the property map on there. This is what you'll get. They'll end up putting it into the gallery here, and you can just kind of go through. And you'll notice this one actually offers a video, which is a very cool... Sometimes you'll get drone footage. Sometimes it'll just be a, a walkthrough. But being able to actually see kind of like a live perspective of the property is, is really nice. And so you'll notice here you have kind of this L-shaped property that actually doesn't connect to this other section of what I would technically call two properties, right? So you actually have three parcels, um, which equate to one parcel in the, the land world. And that is because there's a road right here that runs through, which is gonna be your access to these two pieces. And then you would end up having to walk into this area or carve out a trail for yourself to actually have a path to get back into there. And so you'll notice, right? Looks like we've got some farmland basically out here. Um, I'm going to assume that these are uh, things for like deer. They're going to be designed to draw in deer. So they'll probably plant clovers, radishes, that kind of stuff. Uh, since it is Tennessee. And then it looks like you may actually have some structures on here and they could be hunting blinds, which would make sense, right? And so you have your half an acre and 0.5 acre over here that don't actually attach, but they are your property. 
And so when we come in here, you kind of get a better view. You kind of see, obviously, someone's doing some farming over here. And we have some very good tree coverage in here. Obviously, here's the road I was talking about, and then pro your property on this side, your property on this side. So one of the nice things about this, and, and this may be a negative for some people, but personally, I like the idea of having kind of a road that will split two parcels, uh, well, will split your one parcel into kind of two parcels, is over here on the right, the, uh, that one and a half acres, or maybe it is this side, the one and a half acres, what you could do here, which is really nice, is you could actually carve out a nice little parking garage for yourself. And you could park your cars over there and then walk over to your cabin in the woods, right? And that would allow you to have parking space for friends, family, that kind of stuff if anyone wanted to come up. And it also gives you an opportunity if you aren't on the property 24-7, it gives you the opportunity to potentially use that garage as storage space for someone who does hunt or fish or is there regularly around that property, which could give you some income on the side. So keep that in mind when you're looking at land is there are opportunities for you to kind of siphon off some of your land and use it as an investment to possibly make yourself some money on the side. And so again, here we go. You got one little road here and it looks like this is your other major road that kind of splits the the two and a half, right? And this is what I was talking about. So this could be your main property right here. And you have essentially two acres right here that running through this road, you could have a little driveway with a nice little pole barn or, or you know, multi-car garage that you could lease out and have as income. You know, I know a lot of these places are charging anywhere from 100 to $200 a month uh, for people to park their boats in. So something to think about when you are looking at these properties, which is why I pulled this one up for us. Again, we got a nice little stream creek running through here. And it looks like we, we do have some sort of structure here and got some open space, which is nice. Uh, if you were looking for a already done clearing to put a, you know, off-grid cabin on. And yeah, so looks like they have an RV, is that? Yeah, it looks like they parked an RV out there. I'm assuming that's going to be their, their kind of cabin in the woods, right? So that's kind of interesting. And definitely a lot of wooded was surrounded by some farmland. And it looks like, okay, so this is a seasonal creek. So that's something to keep in mind. So the creek will probably only run during the wet, rainy seasons and will probably dry up mostly when I'm assuming it becomes wintertime-ish in Tennessee. So that's something to keep in mind if, if you're expecting to have a, a winter uh, water source or if a full-time water source running through your property. This may not be a full-time water source for you. And... Yeah, that's really all I have for you guys. And if there's any other questions you guys have, feel free to drop them in the comments and we'll try to address them in another video. And yeah, I mean, if you guys are interested, I highly, highly recommend checking out Land Watch and just kind of dabbling. You know, even if you're not looking to purchase right this minute, just start looking and see what's out there and kind of look at what would be your price range Uh moving forward, looking at land, and then just go from there, right? You can start looking, say, I my price target is this. I don't care what the number of acres is. Start there. Or if you if you know it would have to be within this price target and this amount of acreage, then there you go. Just like we did today. Perfect. You can go through there. You can find a lot of properties. And it'll kind of give you a general idea if you are planning on doing somewhere, say, like, personally, who I live in Wisconsin. If I wanted something out in Montana, it kind of gives me a idea of what to look for and what the prices ranges are going and what kind of property is actually out there right now. So it's really all I got for you guys today. And as always, if you guys enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like and let's try to beat the algorithm, grow this channel. Again, as always, thank you all. Till next time, it's Brian with Fox for Army.